too. It's not too bad out here no, yet. No, not yet. But the heat is definitely killing the my flowers. The heat is on, and yeah. I'll tell you what, you got to watch out because what you got to worry about, you just had it. Deep water is really crucial. If you don't deep water, you're going to end up something like this. And Bobby, come on down here. This is what we call salt burn on the leaves. You can see it right at the tip of the leaves itself. And this is something you got to do. Scotty, grab that uh, piece of rebar right there. I say it all the time. When you guys are watering, you need to water so you're watering three foot deep. How do you tell? Just got to hold that sideways. There you go. Making sure you can push a piece of rebar now, wait down. Now, are you talking for each flower you have? No, I'm talking about for trees? all your trees. Okay. That was an all ash right. that we were just looking at. Okay. For your plants, you're probably talking one to two feet every time you water. And for your flowers, about six inches to a foot. Okay. That's the ideal situation. All if right. you look around our garden, you don't see a lot of that. I had to pick this out. Bobby, spin around our garden. Everything's doing real well. We're watering about once a week. Thank goodness to Bobby because of the fact that he is helping me out because right now our <laughs> irrigation is off. He's watering over there right now, and by doing that, you're gonna really push those salts out of the soil. It's very important you do that this time of year. If you don't, you end up with the results just like that. Now, of course, right. here's something else you're gonna run into, and this is just a little bit of leaf scorch, and you can see it, it's basically burning on the center part of the leaf. Bob, go over to this one right here, and you can see it's on the center part of the leaf. When you've got something like that, Scotty, invariably, well, you're gonna to need to do what you and I do, and that's cover up with some type of long sleeve type shirt. We wear a lot of cotton out here, and that's what you do during the summertime out here to mm -hmm. cool off. What we do for plants, some type of shade cloth. You can see it right here. Anything from 20 to 40 to 50 percent type okay. shade cloth. All right. And by covering up that plant just this time of year, making sure it doesn't actually touch the plant, you're going to be in real good shape to really hold off that what we call sunburn on the plant itself. And then the other thing you want to worry about, you want to worry about a little bit of chlorosis. And you can see that in this leaf right here. This is what we call iron chlorosis. This time of year, we do not fertilize, Scott, and especially with any type of synthetic type fertilizers. What we utilize is right over here, chelated iron. And when you see that, you want to make sure you've got iron and it's being converted into the soil. And by lowering the pH of the soil with some type of real good compost, it's also going to help you out with that conversion. And this is real important this time of year to actually think along those lines. Some other things, well, of course, you can spray some liquid seaweed or something like that. It's like a sunblock and it All helps right. out real good. All right. And it actually helps out with the plant material and it helps with the plant material not really going through a lot of stress. So question gonna, from the go audience. Ahead. Go ahead. It may be a dumb question. I maybe have asked you before. Uh -oh. I don't remember. Sometimes when I water by hand with a hose, I obviously always water the, the dirt underneath the dirt, it. The soil. Is it bad to spray down the flower of the plant? Does that you cause sunburn? You know what? Sunburn? That's kind of a misnomer. Oh, it you is? Know, it's not going to really hurt. Out here in our garden, we go ahead and have that sprinkler. I actually have it turned on occasionally okay. just to increase the humidity level and lower transpiration levels. So by coming on real quick and then shutting off, you're actually increasing the humidity level and the it actually helps out the plant from really going through well, a lot of stress. Well, look at that. It wasn't a dumb question. It wasn't a dumb question. I hear it all the time, and you know what? Invariably, it will help out more than hurt. When we get back, Scott, we're going to talk about mulching. This is one of the most important aspects, components to gardening out here in the desert southwest, and we're going to create that what we call forest floor around all your right. garden, and that's really going to eliminate about nine-tenths of your problems out here in the hot desert southwest. All right. There good go, deal, Scotty. Dave. I yep. appreciate it. Thank uh, you, dude. You haven't called me for golf lately. No, I'll you haven't slide. called me for golf, flying, <laughs> and you Come know on. what? Invite me out to the Ozarks to go right. uh, water skiing and everything right. else you do. All right. Uh, Gina, back inside to you. So now we want to send it out to Scotty and Dave, the garden guy. We know it's hot out there, so how uh, can we keep our garden in good shape, guys? That's a good question. This is the guy with the answer. By the way, I said last hour it's not bad out here. I take that back. Well, you roll up sleeves. I, I kept it rolled down. But here we are. We're talking about gardening. We're talking about how to water. And you know, the first question I get, how often do I water? And I talked about it in the last segment. Guys, on your trees and plants, Water about once a week right now, two to three feet deep. Push those salts out of the soil. You're going to invariably end up with leaf burn on the plant material, Scotty. And that's what happens in the desert southwest. We get such, well, rapid transpiration rates. The salt builds up in the soil, especially as deep as our wells are. And that invariably leads to what? And this is what we see all the time. Bobby, come on down here. You can see this leaf burn or tip burn. 
If you got this on your plants, you are not watering deep are you, and Are you long a fan enough. of just uh, watering on top and letting it sink through or getting one of those spikes that goes down in the Great ground? question. Do not get the spikes. Oh, it really? has got to push those salts all the way oh, down okay. through all the levels of the soil. It does not work to go ahead and make it so it goes, it's already down there. Oh, okay. That salt builds up in our soil very quickly. The other thing is creating that forest floor around the plant material itself, some type of compost, four to six inches thick, and then some type of mulch on top of that goes a long ways. This a cedar bark and it does a great job on getting rid of insects naturally around your home. Okay. So it's a great way to actually making sure that you keep that moisture around the plant itself. And then of course potted plants once a day. It's very important. Bobby come on over here making sure they drain out of the bottom. I've got this setting up. You notice that because mosquitoes invariably have a tendency to actually congregate underneath oh. these damp areas, especially as often as you're watering. So using a little BTI, Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis. You want to say that again? Yeah, I'll say it one more time, Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis. <laughs> And it does a great job on getting rid of that larvae. And then last but not least, we got 30 seconds, Scott. You got to keep it short here. Okay. I'm being reminded, living type mulches like your different types of melons or even your, well, your sweet potatoes or anything along those lines, even pumpkins right now, if you got the kiddies at home, pumpkins need to go in right now to get ready for the October okay. harvest that we have so often. And that is a great way to create that living mulch in around your home. By, and it at the same time retains that moisture. Dave, thank you much. Thank You're you, the Scotty. best. As we go to break, what would like uh, Dave the Garden Guy like to say? You know what? I'd like to say welcome to Good Morning Arizona, guys. We're going to see you right after this break. <laughs>